think they feel this is the way they're going to try and win. And that's not the way it goes. That will be bedlam in the country. It's a very bad thing. It's a very bad precedent. As we said, it's the opening of a Pandora's box. That was former President Donald Trump speaking about what he thinks will happen if he is not granted presidential immunity from the January 6th case. I'm Kevin Cirilli. It's time now for the Decision Desk update. Trump leads in New Hampshire, but only by single digits against Nikki Haley, according to the new CNN poll. His lead in Iowa has surged past 50 percent. Haley and Ron DeSantis will face each other tonight at the CNN GOP presidential debate in Iowa, with just days to go until the first in the nation caucus. Haley and DeSantis are jockeying for second place as Trump has opted to skip the event, but he will appear in a Fox News televised town hall. While lawmakers continue to hammer out a deal ahead of the January 19th partial government shutdown deadline, they might do what they do best, kick the can down the road. Some Republicans and Democrats in the Senate said that a short-term CR, i.e. a punt, into March might give lawmakers more time to reach an agreement. Meanwhile, the House Homeland Security Committee will convene their first impeachment hearing today into Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. Mayorkas would be the first cabinet secretary in 150 years to be impeached. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in Israel, where he urged Israeli officials to do more to protect civilians in Gaza in their war against Hamas. All express grave concern about the dire humanitarian situation and the number of civilians killed in Gaza. We know that facing an enemy that embeds itself among civilians, who hides in and fires from schools, from hospitals, makes this incredibly challenging. But the daily toll on civilians in Gaza, particularly on children, is far too high. U.S. military officials said that the Navy took down at least 21 Houthi drones that have terrorized the Red Sea. Yemen's Houthi rebels, backed by Iran, have added volatility in the region to the Israel-Hamas war. Israeli officials have said they are fighting a multi-front war in the region. And they've also said that Iran has only sought to provoke more conflict. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Pentagon officials said President Biden learned of the diagnosis earlier this week, days after Austin had made a previously undisclosed trip to Walter Reed Medical Center. Pentagon officials told the White House three days after Austin was hospitalized and at one point in intensive care, in surgery, and under general anesthesia. Pentagon officials are reviewing the breakdown in communication. The department is taking immediate steps to improve our notification procedures. Boeing CEO David Calhoun apologized for the door plug blowout from over the weekend on an Alaska Airlines flight out of Portland. I didn't know what happened to whoever was supposed to be in the seat next to that hole in the airplane. I got kids, I got grandkids, and so do you. This stuff matters. Everything matters. We're going to approach this, number one, acknowledging our mistake. We are going to approach it with 100% and complete transparency every step of the way. The incident has canceled hundreds of flights nationwide, and it's prompted new scrutiny over Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. The SEC is investigating itself after its X account preemptively posted that SEC officials have approved a Bitcoin ETF. X officials said that the account operated by the SEC was not utilizing two-factor authentication. SEC officials have until today to announce whether the crypto ETF will in fact be approved. And, as Anthony Scaramucci told us before he headed to Davos, the blockchain industry is betting it'll happen. It'd be a massive expansion for the blockchain industry. The latest incident with X also highlights how social media platforms can be hacked for price manipulation. And that's it for today's Daily Debrief. I'm Kevin Cirilli. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel. And come back here soon for the intersection between politics and policy.